former leader of the Niger Delta agitators, government Ekpemupolo, popularly known as Tompolo, has issued a seven-day ultimatum to President Mohamedou Buhari and Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, God's Will Akpabio, to reconstitute the NDDC board or face a major breakdown of law and order in the Niger Delta. Tompolo said Senator Akpabio's temporary reprieve from the Ijor Youth Council's protest a few days ago is a child's play when compared to what is to come in a few days. The ex-militant leader urged Buhari, members of the National Assembly and security agencies to work towards the constitution of the substantive board of the NDDC with a few days to avert a total breakdown of law and order that will equally affect crude oil exploration and exploitation activities in the region. Well, let's discuss uh, the discussion now. Let's deepen this um, with Kenny Okonlubo, who is the former commissioner of Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, and he joins us now. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us here today. Um, let's start off with the obvious. Do you believe these potential threats of violence are credible? Well, certainly I believe the, the potential threat, threat of violence is very credible. Uh, uh, Tompolo is not someone that you can uh, wish away, because before now, if you remember, uh, President Yeradua, when he granted amnesty, Tumpolo was one of the very last people to accept amnesty. And Yeradwa insisted on the fact that even though he was adopting the carrot and stick approach, he was still given the window of opportunity for Tumpolo to embrace amnesty, which he eventually embraced before Yeradwa died. Okay. Hmm. Um, just out of interest, um, you know, th this recent spate of strikes, if you like, or going and holding certain offices of the NDDC hostage, um, began after the 30-day ultimatum. Um, where do we go from here? Because um, as far as we can see, this method hasn't yet yielded the desired results. It's very sad. You know, I was, I was the very first person that blew the whistle on what was happening in the NDDC. That was first, first it was October 2019, when he, when he mooted the idea of having an interim management committee. I wonder, from my experience as a commissioner, acting capacities are always one that has to do with people who are in a hurry to get as much as they can get. And uh, I was on the studio then with the executive director of uh, projects, Cairo Jubo, and uh, I also warned in April, just about when the IMC was about to wind down, I was also with the studio with him, and I was also on the studio. I remember I was interviewed from Abuja by uh, one of your anchors. And I also told them that, look, what was happening in the NDDC is, is not even what we could have expected, that someone who has been a governor for eight years and a person of God's will Akwabio would actually enact. It is an aberration. I clearly said that the interim, interim management committee was illegal. I have been proved right by the courts. And I pointed out the fraud, the monumental fraud that was going on within the IMC. I talked about the 4.9 billion uh, Naira contract that was given to Osmosev. I talked about the almost five billion Naira contract that was given to Signora, but when they, when they found out that people had uh, raised the lamb, people like us had raised the lamb, they quickly withdrew that uh, award. I talked about the Lassa kits, 57 million paid in 50 places, 357 million the maternal kit. I, I mean, we kept, we kept uh, lending our voice to the monumental fraud that was going on under Aquabio. And it seems as if the more we spoke about it, the more Aquabio became emboldened until the Senate decided to hear our cry and set up the committee that said he should, I mean, the IMC should refund 4.3 billion naira. And if you remember when the Senate said the IMC should return, refund 4.3 billion naira, even the IMC itself, through the Director of Legal Service, said that Joyce Nunez should refund 1.96 billion, being the uh, payments done for the Lassa kits that were not distributed in 185 local governments of the Niger Delta. These are states that are, own, that are not only oil producing, but there are nine of them. How can you just find three people running a, a, a board that should literally be 13? You have, you have to have the managing director, you have to have the executive director of projects, executive director of finance, and a representative from the nine states, including the Ministry of Finance, 
and even the other zones that are not represented in NDDC as a way of checks and balance, how can you not have one person at this particular point in time from the same state as Akbabi running that uh, entity? It's an insult on those of us that are from the Niger Delta. And this is what Akbabi wants that he's exactly going to get from his uh, recalcitrant attitude in not allowing the board to be constituted. And so, I mean, the Section 2 of the NDGC Establishment Act states clearly that there should be a board. And we've had three interim administrations in, in the last couple of months. I want to ask you, why do you think that the Buhari administration has decided to toll this pass? Uh, why is it so difficult to have a sub substantive board in place? And secondly, who is benefiting from this potpourri of managerial and uh, structural issues when it comes to the NDDC? It's very obvious who is benefiting from it. The only person that is benefiting from it is, is Godswill Akbabio, the supervising minister from the NDDC. Before now, we have never had this kind of situation for this long. Interestingly, a board was even nominated, as you are aware, which was... Uh, supposed to be led by Payaz Odubu as the chairman and Bernardo Kumagwa. They actually even went through Senate screening and they put that board in the cooler. It tells you the story of how uh, exactly uh, Buhari views his own government. He's, I mean, when you're an architect of your own misfortune, what else do you want me to say? Just like you rightly said, the, sec the, the, the law is very clear on, on the constitution of the board. Now, if you are even not satisfied with the board that you have put in place, you could have easily reconstituted the board, just like what he has done on the NSITF. The NSITF has been one that has been fraught with fraud also, if you ask me. And you, on, you, on, you wonder, why is it that we are, we are talking about the man who came on a mantra of fighting corruption? And, he's, and almost every co ministry, department, and agency, it's enmeshed with corruption. And it is corruption that has been confirmed, not even by, by those of us who are supposed to be uh, critics of the government, but Senate, the Senate and the House of Rep, led by APC. Today, we have a, an APC Senate president. We have an APC speaker of the House of Reps. And they have indicted most of these commissions that are under the Buhari's watch for different uh, fraudulent practices. So it beats my imagination why Buhari just sits nonchalantly. I think this uh, Tompolo's uh, 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 ultimatum will be a wake-up call, because by the time we start uh, getting a couple of uh, pipelines bo uh, busted by, the, uh, uh, by those who are agitators, we know what it's going to cost us. We are in the, our economy is, is very fragile right now. We do not want to wish or toe that part. But why do you want to please Akpabio to displease everybody? Everybody knows that forensic audit is necessary. But how can Akpabio insult our intelligence by telling us that it's only Akwanga that can oversee forensic audit when we have suitable people, capable people who will bring the checks and balances and see the leakages that have been going on in the NDDC. Look over this forensic audit. He talked about this forensic audit in 2019. This is 2021. It was on the, it was on the 6th of May that the Senate set up the committee to probe the Ponde led the IMC. And this is another, another one year has passed by. What does Buhari need to know that Akwabio is actually helping to perpetrate fraud in the NDDC? So particularly for the benefit of our international viewers, um, it sounds like this, is going, this could be an incredibly volatile situation. Um, but how difficult is it in practice to reconstitute the NDDC board? Is it just uh, at the stroke of a pen, whether it be the minister or the president? Or are there some other steps that need longer time, um, which would make meeting that seven-day uh, deadline impossible? It, it's, it's easy now. It's easy because we already have a board that has been screened by the, by the Senate and it, all, all they need to do is inaugurate that board. Even if they wish not to inaugurate that board, they can quickly name a board. And once they name a board, that will assuage all our feelings. The agitations will stop. And when the board is named, they will submit the names to the Senate president and they will go again for screening and inauguration. I mean, this idea of carrying a one-man show, it's, it's an aberration. It is annoying. It, this is exactly the things that we have said about the APC-led government of Buhari. And people just keep saying we just like criticizing for criticizing's sake. Why are they on the self-destruct? That's the question you, you should, you should, we should all ask ourselves. Okay, um, let me still look into solutions, Kenny, um, because some have said or suggested that Agitators in the Niger Delta are potentially shooting themselves in the foot if they make the Niger Delta inhospitable for oil prospectors. Because uh, someone recently said that recently we have fewer oil, oil drills going on in the country. So 
Is the ultimatum the way forward? I'm asking again. Is there no other way of petitioning those closer to home, the local governments, the, the state governments, the, the legislators? What do you want us to do? Uh, my governor, uh, Senator Ifan Yokoa, who usually is not confrontational, has come out as the chairman of the South-South uh, Governors Committee to clearly say that what has been happening in the NDC is fraudulent, that they should even stop giving monies to the IMC, and that uh, the Interim Management Committee should only pay salaries until such a time that the board is constituted. He was backed by Nwike, he was backed by all the other governors from the South-South. Even Akere Dulo, who usually would not uh, lend his voice, has lent his voice. To, who is also a bona fide person to speak on this issue because Ondo is one of the uh, states, one of the nine states of the NDDC, have said that the president, Akere Dulo, is, is a member of the APC, have said the president should immediately inaugurate the board. The governors have spoken. The same governors, he said, came to him that they should carry out a forensic audit. Rather, what Akwabio does is that he immediately starts attacking the personalities of the governors. He attacks and tries to destroy the Ijo Youth Council, which has uh, uh, carried this uh, uh, fight on the forefront. He tries to divide their ranks. Even for somebody like me that is from the Ndokwa Nation, we have the, oil, we have the largest oil gas reserves in, in the Ndokwa community. We feel very short change. We have never even had anybody represent us in the board of the NDDC. And we are wondering what is happening. Our people are living in abject squalor and poverty. So what else do you want to happen if all these people have spoken, especially the, 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 the Senate? I mean, but why I even fault the Senate and the, and the House of Reps is that I was even disappointed that they, they passed the 2020 budget of the, of the NDC. They should have kept that budget as long as, the fact, as long as the president had refused to constitute a board. I don't even know why they went ahead to pass those, those, those budgets. And if all these people have spoken and Buhari is still recalcitrant, allowing Akwabio continue to act like an emperor, an emperor of the Niger Delta, I mean, what else do you expect? These are like pushing the people to the wall. Of course, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to burning of pipelines. I don't subscribe to destruction of federal-owned uh, uh, infrastructures, which will take us, like you have rightly said, it will set us back first, it will, it will, have, it will put a hole in, in, the, in the funds that we are earning now as a people, and it will certainly not be a solution to the, to the problem. I, I, don't, I might not subscribe to that, but when you have decided to push the people to the wall, what happens? Uh, That's a question you must ask yourself. You made some serious allegations against the Minister of the Niger Delta, and we do hope that he would also come to give his own side of the story. But let me ask you very quickly before we let you go. What do you say to those who say the real issues of the Niger Delta have been relegated to a debate over who makes up the board or if a board should be constituted? Okay, let me just quickly answer the one of the, of the minister. You see, Jack Rich that he set up to even oversee the COVID. Remember, there was a COVID contract I talked about in 4.9 billion, about 4.9 billion that was given to uh, Osmosel. Clearly said he did not see the distribution of those uh, uh, COVID intervention uh, uh, kits and all the, all the other things that they were supposed to have, have procured. He, he appointed him himself. And the, the, the executive council even upped it to 6.9 billion. It was out of that that point they said they used 1.5 billion to take care of, of themselves, the staffs. Everything I've said here are backed with facts. I, I wish the minister would come and, and try to impugn on any of the things I have said here. Now, to the question you have just asked. Yes, constituting the board, what we are saying is that, look, it's an APC-led government. I happen to be an, a, a public affairs analyst and I belong to the other uh, political divide. We don't expect that he's going to make appointments from the other political divide. He has very credible people in, the, in that government, uh, still, which I believe in that party, who can actually steer the ships of the, of, of, of the NDDC. But again, one question you must also ask yourself is that what happened to the former board that was, that was nominated? What was actually wrong with it? They haven't even given us any excuse why it was not inaugurated. All right. That's a good place to leave it. Thank you so much. So many questions to be answered. Uh, Mr. Kenny Okolubo is the former commissioner of Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission. Great to have you again.